And that apology was made 160 years to the day since the Dutch officially abolished slavery. July the 1st, 1863, was when the Dutch legally ended slavery in Dutch Guyana, now known as Suriname, and is and in other colonies in the Caribbean. But most slave labourers on Dutch plantations were forced to keep on working for another 10 years. New research has revealed the King's ancestors earned the modern-day equivalent of nearly $600 million from slavery. Starting in the late 1500s, the Dutch West India Company expanded to become the world's largest transatlantic slave trader, shipping around 600,000 people from Africa to the Americas. For more on this story, let's bring in Kawan Fata Black, who's a professor of Dutch colonial history at the University of Leiden. He joins me from Amsterdam. Thanks so much for being on the program, Kawan. First of all, how has this apology been received in the Netherlands? Is it a case of better late than never? Yes, absolutely. I think the reception has been uh, very positive also because um, in addition to the apology that you heard in the fragment uh, just before, uh, he asked for forgiveness for the lack of action of his, uh, his own uh, family uh, in the time of uh, slavery. So it was not only an apology uh, on the part of the state, um, for its participation in the slave trade, but also for the inaction of his own family uh, during this time. Yes, speaking of that research, what's the significance of it being commissioned by the king and into the revealing such darkness in terms of his family history? Yeah, so, so it's important, of course, that this uh, research is done independently, but he has decided that there should be two studies. Um, one is of the objects in the uh, private collection of the royal family. Uh, so are those objects where they obtained under conditions of um, uh, colonialism? And the other study is really of the family, how they uh, operated uh, within the slave system, how they uh, profited from it, and how they made it part of their own court culture, but also of Dutch, Dutch culture. Um, and so that's much more than what he asked forgiveness for today. So mm. what he asked forgiveness for today was the inaction of his uh, uh, his forebears on the issue of slavery. And I think we will see another step when we know the extent of the family's participation um, uh, in, uh, in the coming years. There's now the question of reparations. What happens next? Well, that was, I think, very special about the... Um, uh, the, 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 the speech of the king today is that at the uh, the apologies by the state in December last year, the uh, prime minister said, well, after slavery and after these apologies, uh, we don't uh, put a full stop, but we put a comma. There is, it's unfinished. We need to, to, to do more. Uh, that was still very abstract. The king was not talking about um, uh, it, it, it repair and healing and coming slightly closer to, to saying something, well, more concrete about what that should mean. Uh, but at least uh, he, he communicated to all levels of government that this is uh, this is going to be an important issue in the years to come. And also that there is no no blue, blueprint for mm. reparatory justice, but that is, that is a, a journey that they uh, uh, think we should uh, make together. Kawan, do you think this will put pressure on other royal families to apologise for their colonial past, the likes of, say, Britain and Belgium? Yes. Uh, and I think Britain is first in line here. Uh, there is a close connection between the royal family, uh, between the two families and their history in slavery as well. Um, so I'm, I'm certain that among their peers, this uh, has to make some kind of impression. Um, and that they will uh, well have to have to uh, respond in, in some way. Uh, however, the king presented the apologies and the whole speech very much as a Dutch kingdom affair. So the Dutch kingdom is uh, uh, consists of four countries: the Netherlands, mm. um, and uh, Aruba and Curaçao, and Saint Martin in the Caribbean. And so he spoke very much as the head of that state uh, with the four countries. He did not yeah. talk about other countries or the international relations. He also did not speak about other countries that were affected by the Dutch slaving system. Um, but I'm sure that this will um, well have make an impression on on, on royal families and uh, heads of state elsewhere. Yes. Well, we'll wait and see if it does. Thank Thank you very much for your insights. Kawan Fata Black, a professor of Dutch colonial history at the University of Leiden. Thank you.
You're welcome.